Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday the 28th of April and I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. Do feel free to comment, put something in the chat. It's always nice to know that you're here. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the day's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. On a Thursday, the theme for prayer is community. And so we pray. Blessed are you, creator of all things. The heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. And the psalm today is Psalm 145. Your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today we continue reading from the book of Colossians and we're at chapter 2 beginning at verse 16. And St Paul carries on. Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival a new moon for celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations, <clears throat> indeed, have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. So the next section of St Paul's teaching and uh, <clears throat> let me read a reflection on that passage, this week written by Karen O'Donnell. She says, each day we are bombarded with images of the body, the perfect body that is, and a wide variety of foods, diets, lotions, cosmetics, clothing and other products that will help you achieve that perfect body. No longer just an issue for girls and women, studies show that men are increasingly negatively impacted by the onslaught of such images and messages. Even spiritual seeking can reinforce these messages, 
especially in some types of yoga and alternative therapies. As we read in verse 23, such messages can have the appearance of wisdom promoting self-imposed piety, humility and severe treatment of the body. But like a fashionable diet offering the promise of quick results, such messages are empty and dangerous. We're not to succumb to such messaging and imagery, but rather to set our minds on the things above. That's not to say the body doesn't matter, indeed it does. Being healthy, enjoying exercise, wearing makeup and nice clothes are all perfectly fine. But this does mean that when looking for an image of perfection to aim for, it's not to the media we turn, but to Christ. It is to this likeness that we are to be conformed, and in doing so we eliminate the distinctions between us, such that every life is hidden with Christ in God. What opportunities might there be for you to be more Christ-like today? So that's a big question to take into today. What opportunities might there be for you and I to be more Christ-like today? To be conformed to his image. So we pray, beginning with the collect. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. And we continue in prayer. That the church may show its unity in Christ, that all churches may work together for the benefit of all peoples, that all movements towards unity may prosper, that divisions and conflicts may cease, that the world may find lasting peace, that none may hunger or thirst, Lord graciously hear us, that the barriers that divide may be broken down, that we may live in unity, peace and concord, that we may come to mutual understanding and care, Lord graciously hear us. And on this day of the week when the focus for prayer is community, we take time to pray for the community of Purton. Loving God, we thank you for the community of Purton, for all who live here, all who work here, all who serve the community in myriad ways. We pray for residents of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest, those in toddler groups, nurseries and preschool groups, those in our three school communities and all who work in them, the residents of Courses Court Retirement Complex and Purton Manor Nursing Home, and those of all ages in between. We pray for our PCSOs and our local councillors, for those who work in the two doctor's surgeries, the pharmacy and dentists, for community leaders, church leaders, those who work in the library, shops and pubs, for all who help create our community, who volunteer and help others. And we were this week we pray especially for the residents of Worcester Grove, Crowland Avenue and Tinton Court, asking for your blessing, peace and protection for those who live in each home. May they know they're loved by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray for Ukraine. God, who sees the weakness in acts of naked aggression, God, who feels the fear in moments of acute helplessness, Cure this warring madness and shield all who fall in harm's way. Leech the poison from the mind that thinks strength is shown in a bullying force. And may an equal strength in solidarity give resolve to those whose aim is to protect and respect, not just the ones we call our own, but all with whom we can share a better, more peaceful world. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. And so, Lord, be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us this day and evermore. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me for prayer today. I hope you have a great Thursday and if you're able to join me, we'll be back here tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.